So a little while ago, me and Kyle from WebDip Simplified put together a Mars weather app. And while it was cool, I only did a desktop version. And then a lot of people asked if I could do a responsive version of it. And since I'm talking a lot about responsiveness lately, I figured it would make a lot of sense to do that. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. Hi there, my name is Kevin and welcome to my channel where we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. As I said, we're going to be doing the Mars weather app. We're making it responsive. Despite the fact that I did this desktop first, a lot of the discussions I've been having lately showed that people tend to do desktop first to begin with and then they scale it down. So I really wanted to look at how we could take something that we made desktop first but still make it mobile first, if that makes a little bit of sense. It might seem like a little bit more work than it's sort of worth when I start. Personally, I think it works well, but if it's an approach, if you see, if you're someone who does desktop first and you're looking at going, well, this seems like a bit more than I have to, wait until the very end because I do look at why I think it is a, a simplification in the long run. A little bit of a TLDR before we even get started though, it's I don't have to worry about layout early on. So it's sort of by having my media queries later on that worry about making things work at big screen sizes only. For the default styling, it just ends up being a lot simpler and then we can make our changes there if ever they're needed. And then later on, we can start worrying about just layout stuff and other changes as well, obviously. It's not a perfect perfect, but we'll see how it works. Anyway, um, the last thing I wanna say is at the very end of it, I have a challenge for you. I'm gonna be challenging you guys and I wanna see how you tackle it. I'm gonna feature some of the solutions here on my channel in a future video. So that challenge is related to what I cover in this video. So stick around to the very end and we'll look at what that challenge is. And you might notice I'm actually on camera now. I've tried to keep it small and down here on the side. I think it's been a long time since I've done this. I wanna know, do you prefer seeing me here? I'm gonna generally not stop to actually talk, but. Um, if I do stop at any point, I can make some eye contact and, and you know, you have something else to look at. So I'd like to know in the comments down below if you like seeing me here or not. Uh, it would help me out. I can turn it off. No big deal. I can keep doing this. No big deal either. So just let me know. Um, so what are we doing? Well, we can either take a desktop approach, uh, the desktop first approach where we're going to keep this and then add in media queries in my, in my CSS where we'd be adjusting this for the smaller screen. Or we can take a mobile first approach where I'm gonna sort of strip some layout stuff out and build it up that way. And a lot of people commented saying they do sort of a desktop first, but they do it that way. And I've done that too. I, you get the desktop comp or whatever, you just get carried away with it. It's more fun, so you do it all. And then you pull it out and put it into media queries at the bottom that are layout oriented and you're starting with min width. So if your media queries are starting with min width, that is when you are working mobile first and that's what we're gonna do this time. And I'll explain a little bit of why as we go through it. So here I'm going to do a min width and I'm literally just guessing now. <laughs> um, if you do have mockups, obviously you don't have to guess, but I gave this a size of about a thousand pixels. So I'm going to start with 900 and we're going to see how it goes pretty much. I don't know exactly. Um, the other thing I'm also going to do is I'm going to pull open this. I am in Firefox. So you'll notice that my little icon guy is right here for responsive mode. If you're in Chrome, the exact same option is just over here on the other side. But I'm going to go into responsive mode. Let's set that to an iPhone 6 because that's a nice small screen size. And right away we have a problem. We just have a zoomed out version of our site. So one thing I didn't do is if we come all the way back to the HTML here, I'm going to add in a meta tag. So if ever you get this where you're writing, uh, you're trying to make it responsive and it's not working, it's not using your media queries, you are missing this right here. So I'm going to give it a name of viewport. Uh, I'm going to put it all in different lines here just so we can see it better. And the content is going to be equal to, and it's going to be width equals device width, comma, initial scale is equal to one. And actually I said I was gonna <laughs> put it all on one line or different lines so you can see it better, but we'll just do this because um, it make more sense. So that is the meta tag that you want. Pretty much what that's saying is um, because if you have an, a, a, an iPhone, it's sort of 365 pixels across, but it's not really because it's high res. So it has a lot more pixels than that. So this is sort of taking its simulated width because it's using CSS pixels. I'm not gonna get into that too much, but basically this is saying it's now gonna be a responsive site. So when I refresh, you can see we're at the right scale now. So this line right here is super, super important if you're doing responsive websites. Let's just fix that up. And let's go back to my CSS now. So we have lots of problems. Now this is the one that's gonna cause us the most problems because everything's really broken right now. We're gonna come back to that soon. 
But before we come back to that, let's just turn it off for now. Uh, it should be this one here, my previous weather. So I think if I do a display of none on there, it will disappear. There we go. And it won't be in our way. We can we might have to come up with a completely different solution for that. Um, and that's where mobile first or desktop first, when you're into some components like that, it doesn't really end up changing be, or it doesn't matter so much because they're so different from one another. Um, and now we can jump up to here. Now, one thing on my body, I gave it a height of 100 VH because I wanted that special thing with the overflow hidden. That's not going to work necessarily in this case. So I'm going to take that off right away. Uh, all this other stuff I think does make sense. And let's bring that into here. So that's on my body. And uh, actually we can test that out and see, does it work? There we go. We have probably, there we go. We have no scroll bar or anything like that. So I see that it's working. I'll go back to my iPhone six. Uh, let's come back up now. And so Mar do, 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 all this is good. And actually I'm going to give this a min height of hundred VH here. Um, just so we don't get that weird overflow thing that's going on. There's a weird thing with body. If the height of the body is less than hundred percent and that just means the content on it's less than hundred percent, it doesn't end up filling the whole page. So the height of the body actually stops like here. So the background image would stop say here, but then, or even let's just, I'll show you height is 50 VH. Um, so you can see the height of my body is stopping here, but the way background images are done, even though you're putting it on the body, it's not really on the body. It's just going to fill the screen. Really strange behavior, but just a good one to know if ever you get a repeating background and you really don't understand why. So we'll give that a minimum height of 100 VH just to make sure that doesn't happen. And now obviously we have lots of problems going on. So let's come, we can skip a lot of this, which is just typography. And I can come down to here. That is this with the dark background on it. So some of this I'm going to keep. My padding I think I'm going to keep. My max width could stay here. The margin's going to go away. All this grid stuff is going to go away though. So I'm just going to do a command X to cut. I control. I say command because usually when I'm teaching in the classroom, I'm saying command because we're on max, but I'm on a PC, so it'd be control. Um, and that was my Mars current weather. Paste that back in. I know at the small screen sizes, we just get the full thing right here. Now, obviously we have a few issues, but overall it's actually not terrible. Um, I'm wondering if I'll be able to move this around somewhere else just so people don't have to scroll to see it on certain screen sizes. That would probably be a good thing, but we'll fix everything up here. Uh, the first thing I think I'm gonna do is also change my font sizes on some of this because some of them seem kind of big. So I'm gonna copy all of this, come down to here. And on my uh, root, we're gonna put that back in. Now I'm gonna leave these alone. These are the ones we wanna keep at the big screen sizes. And actually this is a nice thing with um, custom properties, CSS custom properties, rather than SAS variables or less or anything like that. These you can modify inside of media queries. You cannot do that with SAS or less media queries, uh, media queries uh, variables. So here, my H1, I can make it a little bit smaller maybe. Um, H2 will do like, I'm just making up numbers now. I'm just taking guesses at what I think would work well. This I'm going to leave the same. And actually I might keep that one really big. Maybe we'll just make it a little bit smaller. Um, but I think something like that looking quickly overall, I think that looks okay. So I'm going to leave it like that. Maybe we could tweak it a bit more. Um, here we obviously have some issue with the borders and I'm going to change quite a few things here. So let's come down and find that. So, um, just if you didn't watch the previous part, I did write it with SAS. So anytime you see this ampersand, that would be the same as having date day. So I have my date and then my date day here. The ampersand is just doing, taking this and plugging it in there. Uh, my day is okay though. The temperature. So temperature, this is where I had the border. And actually I want to keep my border, but I want to take this off of here. Um, I'm going to take the grid column too, because I don't really need it. And so that was my temp. So everything, oh, there we go, that takes off. And actually, whoops, I just realized my padding is going to be off a little bit there too. The padding I can remove. Uh, actually, I can keep that here. I'm going to do a 2M0 for my padding. So I want to take it off the sides, but I want it on the top and the bottom. And we can come down to here and put that padding on back that way. Perfect. Uh, I think the last thing I'm going to do is just move my wind over to that side. So I'm, I want these to sort of be switched around. And I think I'm going to make this circle a little bit smaller because it is kind of big right now. 
So let's go and look at how we can do that. So that is all under my wind. I want to keep the grid. I could move this grid column down to here, but uh, it doesn't really matter too much if I don't. Um, ideally, everything would be grouped for the big screen sizes there, so I might do it. This, though, I want to keep that where what I have here because I do need the two columns. So I think all that's going to stay the same. The big thing that's going to change is this that's in my wind. The section title and the reading, I want them to be a column of one over two. And then I want to move my direction over to that side. I'm going to copy this. And that was in my wind and paste that in. Let's just fix my indents a little bit. And so that one's good. So if I come back up to here, my wind, there it is. On this one, I should be able to do a one over two. And I think that's okay. My direction is going to change. That's going to stay the same. But my grid column is actually going to become a two over three. So they go that way. And as I said, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. So I'm actually going to copy a lot of this down into my media query. Um, the size here, I'm actually going to, this is all going to stay the same. Actually, I want to keep all of that grid column. Actually, this should be a one over two because I originally had it on that side. Okay, so that should be okay. I'm just gonna double check. I'm gonna go to my big screen size. So here we can see that it's okay. And you can see in my middle here, like there's a lot of problems. So we'll tackle that in a little bit. Um, but at my large screen sizes, everything is working. So I haven't broken anything, which is nice. Um, this is why I generally prefer starting at the small screen size and then working my way up uh, instead of doing it the other way around because then you're just double checking everything as you're going, which is kind of annoying. Uh, which could beg the argument for doing desktop first as well. Here, with my let's go back to my iPhone 6. I want to make that smaller. So that would be right on here, arrow direction. So my size here, let's bring that down to a 4M. So that should make my circle smaller. Uh, this is getting too big now. This is where if I use the same size here and here. So if I had it in like the wind instead of having it... Um, in both of these, it could have made my life a little bit easier because I could update in one spot, but stay la vie. <laughs> um, you know what? I'll keep it like that. I don't mind if it's sticking off. If you wanted to, you could change it. I guess in this case, it would become a 0 0.5. That's too small, 0.75. There we go. So I could, uh, I'm going to do that. Okay. Just copy all of this. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. So I don't need that. I just wanted to copy the and arrow thing so it'd be a little faster. Uh, so here it's going to be a one rem. So there it should be the right size. And then here it's also the right size. Okay. And the last thing I'm going to do is actually on my wind, on my wind here, my grid template columns. I'm actually going to change these a little bit to the same thing I have here. Because um, what's happening is I'm getting two. Actually, let's open up my... Dev tools here, and if I turn on that, I'm getting two columns. Let's change the color so we can actually see it. Um, so I'm getting two equal columns. So this column is really wide. I don't want it to be that wide. I want it to stop as soon as it can stop there. So if I make that a min content rather than having it as just an FR, it means that first one will be a lot smaller. And then maybe I could also just come in here and say the column gap is like 1M or something like that, just so they're not actually touching each other. And something like that could work pretty nicely. I could play with the size of that to shrink it down to try and match the height, but I think the circle would become so small. Uh, I don't really want to do that. So I think that's looking pretty good. Let's keep on moving on from there. And actually for the small screen sizes, it's not terrible, um, but I think we get this big empty spot. So I'm wondering if I could move that over to here, if that would look terrible. Now, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it uh, without using, because the problem now is, <laughs> If I come and take a look, I don't have a grid anywhere. To, I have That's the only grid I have. I don't have like any sort of grid to play with. So if I come back over to here, it's gonna be the last thing in here. It's my unit right there. And it's the last thing because you can see this is this is the natural order. Um, and you may be going right now, you might actually be saying, Kevin, you've done a lot more work, but pretty much if I, you know, if I strip all this out, this is a lot of the complexity here. I have a lot of my grid set up and I have some of it scattered up there too. Um, but I have a lot of the complexity of everything here in terms of layout. Everything that I've done up high is just pretty much placing its typography and it's placing things up and down like this. And obviously there's a few little components and little things that are a little bit more difficult. 
Um, so what we could even do is, I wonder, let's try. Okay, I'm just going to throw some stuff up here and see what happens. Position fixed. Right 1M. And hit save and see where it goes. So it did go there and then top 1M even. If that's okay. And then maybe I'm going to make this like a 3. This is kind of awkward if I just did this, like I'm playing with magic numbers now. I don't want it to actually be next to this. Is the, you know, I'm also, this is kind of weird, eh? Hmm. You know what I actually think the easiest thing to do with this is? Because I do think it's an important thing to have. I'm actually going to do this as a left, not a right. Uh, this will be a two because that's going to match the padding I have on the side here. And my top will also be a two. And then what I'm actually going to do now is let's come back up to my main title. I have two choices. I could do this actually on my, um, I, I'm going to do it on this. I'm going to add padding. It's going to be a 4M, 2M, 2M. Uh, oh, we'll make that even six then. Um, I'd rather people have to scroll. They can see that there's more text. They're going to scroll down and they're going to look. Oh, I don't want it to be fixed though. Okay, that's fine. Uh, just because when you scroll down, that's kind of awkward. <laughs> so I think even then that means this will become absolute. And then that way it won't scroll. So I just noticed I wasn't loading things in anymore. And because I've been saving and it keeps, I think, putting every time I, the page gets refreshed, which every time I save, it does. Um, it's actually not um, updating the information anymore because... Uh, so basically, uh, I just I put in too many API requests and it doesn't want to give it to me anymore. Uh, NASA has not too happy with me, so that's okay. We're just going to keep going and it's okay if I don't if it's not updating for now. Not a big deal. I don't really need the the text that we had in there or under here. You know, it's not changing the layout itself. So as far as these two going across. Okay, so I actually I think I, I like that better. I've set so I have the position absolute on there. Um, I, you know, it's not the best solution, but it's one that I am happy with, um, and that will work. Now we've changed the visual positioning of it, but it still means that like if someone's on a screen reader, it makes sense to me that this is still the last thing that they're coming across. Like if they need to change it, they can change it. So, uh, I'm going to leave that just like that. So now obviously when we get to the big screen sizes, we don't want that to happen. So there are, there are a couple of choices of what we can actually do with this. I could turn all of that off. Or this is one where we could build in like the opposite type of thing where we could put some of this in a max width media query. Um, and this is, you know, when is it make more sense to do what? Um, in this case, it sort of makes sense instead of turning this off, you know, having to overwrite it, it does make sense to have that in its own media query. So I'm gonna do this in here. Um, I know this is a at media max width 900 pixels. Um, this is a SAS thing. You cannot do this in regular CSS. So that means when I get to 900 pixels now, it, uh, so you can see there now it's jumped back down to there and then it comes back up between the two states. So I could do the exact same thing if I copy this, did I? Or actually, we could leave that. I already have my Mars current weather down here. So I could just say padding is 2M. That's not too big of a deal. There we go. That's looking okay. And that's looking just fine. Um, I might even give a Mars current. One thing we could do though. Yeah, let's just leave it like that. So there we go. I think that's working okay. I think I'm actually going to build in just because I find that the small screen sizes, it looks a little weird that it's cutting off like that now that I'm playing around with it a bit more. Um, I'm going to keep a bit of margin on this, but I'm not gonna make it as big. So margin 1M just so I have some space all the way around. And then when we hit the big screen sizes, it sort of adjusts. And you can see things aren't perfect yet. Um, I'm not too happy with this state, and I know I'm missing a big number here, so that is a bit of an issue. But um, I think I would keep at this size, I would keep that there, but this would be better if it was in two columns. So that is at, you know what, maybe I could, that's okay. 
because even here it doesn't bother me too much it's more when it's getting a bit bigger so i'm looking at this and do i need a, a media query at 600 and another one at 900 or can i get away with having just one so the easiest way is to play around with this so let's make that like a 750 and see what happens uh so here obviously it's okay and then we're going to hit 750 and see it's breaking so that means i can't get away with that and i think even at 850 it's not going to work so 850 is not the worst. Um, I could play with these margins on the side and it might actually end up working uh, a little bit better because, I mean, it's not terrible. So why don't I try that? Margin four, zero. What if I just did that? So I still, I'm getting this little part. That's right around 900 too. So I think I actually had the right, the right idea with the 900. I set that up and then it's going to work uh, like that and then there. So that means I probably do want another media query around 600. So let's come up to here and say at media min width of 600 pixels. And the main thing I'm going to change is this here. I'm going to have to do a couple of things here actually. Uh, whoops, uh, that's my Mars current weather. I do want to have columns but I'm just going to do two columns and um, that means I want my temp to be a oh we're going to want a display grid on here too display grid which means I could probably turn it off from here I won't need that anymore and I'm going to need three of them here I'm going to have my temp I'm going to have my, actually, I'm going to need all three, uh, date, temp, and wind, just to put each one where I want it to be on this grid. So my date's actually going to be a grid column of one over negative one. So it's going to take up that whole space all the way across. I only have that. Why is it doing it like that? I just want to check. That's not doing what I want it to. Current weather. 1 over negative 1. Let's just see. Uh, grid column 1 over 2. There we go. And my wind will be a grid column of 2 over 3. I think the reason that that's actually breaking a little bit. Oh, no, I have a margin on there. Ah, and then that means here my padding. Uh, actually... Yeah, we'll do a padding of zero. And on my grid, we'll do a grid. I don't need the grid. I need a row gap of 2M. There we go. I can turn off my grid. Oops, turn it on, turn it off. There we go. Again, there would be numbers under here, so it would balance out a little more. And I think I made a little mistake, so things are going to screw up here. Because I originally, I said it wouldn't matter if I left this stuff up here. <laughs> So my wind, I'm going to steal that and bring that all the way down to here. Temp wind and get the grid columns it needs. And this one, which is my date. I can have a grid column of one over two. And there we go. Uh, and again, this would normally have a number in there. So like say so uh, it would be here 375 let's just say there we go that would work and then as we get to bigger screen sizes it could go like that and we have the other date that would fill in underneath there but you get the idea it is starting to come together so there it works we have a bit more content it would look a little bit less bare we'd have another date under there and then when we get so that's like the ipad ish or the tablet size and then we get to the phone size and everything just stacks um so in doing that i pretty much started with the mobile I started with a desktop and I went down to mobile first. Um, but let's just go look at the code before we wrap this whole thing up. Um, and if we look through a lot of this stuff here, other than my wind, which is obviously the complicated thing, but we're going to notice almost everything here. Well, here is just typography. Here we have some padding, some background colors. We have more typography, more spacing. Uh, my wind is the only one that's a little bit complicated because I'd set up a grid just for the wind. So we have a few extra things there. 
This is nothing to do with layout. Well, we have there, but again, that's to place it on the grid we created. We just have the size, we have more colors. Here we just have colors. Here we just have colors, that's for my arrow. So again, a little bit more complicated. Here, my info. Info. Um, this is getting placed like that. I guess I could steal that actually <laughs> and put that in the media query. Uh, my unit, now I did cheat a little bit by sticking it up here at the top. And I guess my top now could become a three just so it's more, there we go. Uh, and the left could be a three, two actually. So it's lining up better. There we go. Um, so I am cheating a little bit with this max width one, but it's just so I don't have to turn it off after. So I'm creating a, this is a, a mobile or desktop first one, I guess, but it's more because I'm doing something that I don't want to exist at other sizes. So I don't want to have to go to position and turn it back to static if that's not what I need. Um, and even I could maybe keep it on, but anyway, let's not get into it. It's easier. Just use this only at small screen sizes. And it, oh, I meant I said that I was going to show you what it would do, but it's pretty much just doing the media query and then sticking unit in here automatically. Um, so nothing too complicated. Layout. Uh, so then we're just doing some really basic things here. This is all just colors, more colors, more widths, more spacing. You'll notice that there's nothing through all of this that's dealing really with layout except little miniature things. We're making components that have some layout stuff in it, but on a large scale, we're not worrying about it. Then when we get into our media queries eventually, and I didn't cover the previous days, uh, it would take another solution. I don't want this video to drag out too long, but I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in a second. Um, but then we have, doo -doo -doo. then we start going, okay, now I'm at a bigger screen size. Let's start adding some layout stuff in there. And we bring in some layout things and it gets a little bit more complex. We get two columns and then we change some font sizes. And then we get a little bit more complex and we change some padding and fix the border, add some borders in there, change a few more things, and then place a few more things where they need to go, play with some sizing. And actually, I don't need all of this because we have it in two places. We don't need that. We don't need that. Not sure if we even need any of that. Does that break anything? It doesn't break anything. There we go. So we had a little bit of redundancy there. So it just becomes a modification and adding complexity instead of trying to strip things away, changing um, positioning, changing things, playing with all of that. I think it makes a lot more sense. Uh, the only thing that seems to be busted is my info here. <laughs> oh, because I copied it and then never pasted it. Uh, dot info grid row uh, grid column one over three. There we go. And it's back to how it was. So there we have it. It's, it's mostly responsive. I'm pretty happy with that. But you might have said, Kevin, you forgot something. And I did. I said early on I was going to do it. And then I just felt it wouldn't have helped with the purpose of this video. And I also wanted to see how you guys would do it. So I have put the link to the GitHub down below where you can get the repo for this. So what I want you to do is I want you to work on that repo and take that that thing on the, so it's the previous days thing, that thing that was sliding up and sliding down. That sort of needs a complete rework, I think, to work at the other screen size. So I wanna see how you do that. So go ahead and clone the repo. Again, the link is down below and do whatever you want with it. Be super creative, just make it super simple, whatever you want. Take the simplest approach you can, but it needs to be a nice experience on mobile. So what we're gonna do is use the hashtag Mars Weather Challenge over on Twitter to be able to submit your responses. If you're not on Twitter, you can always come to my Discord. The community link is down below. So if you hit that up, you can send me a link that way as well. Uh, just DM it to me through Discord. Only if you're not on Twitter though, I wanna try and keep as many in one place as possible, plus it'll give people a chance to check them out. The easiest thing is just to put it on your own repo. If it's over on GitHub, I can access all the files there easily and check out all the challenge results. We'll see how many I get. Hopefully I can feature them all. Now the time frame for this, I'm gonna do it as a two week thing just cause I wanna make sure people do have a chance to get all of their uh, replies in and all of the stuff in that they want to be able to. So whatever you want to do, get it in by the 21st of April. Gives you a little bit of time to work on it, come up with a cool idea, and that is it. I really, really look forward to seeing what you guys throw together for this challenge. A big thank you for watching all of this. A big thank you to my patrons for helping support everything I do here on my channel. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome. I hope that looks okay. Does this look okay? Do you like the purple? Do you like my face while I'm talking down there? It didn't have any purple light behind it then. But uh, yeah, let me know, please, in the comments. Let me know what you think about the where I'm going with the setup. This hand is very dark. This hand is very bright. I need to fix that. 
Why is... Oh. I fixed it. I had a, a light. Ha! <laughs> That's better. Yes. <laughs> I was wondering what was happening there. Okay, cool. So already one improvement. Let me know about what you think. I had orange because orange is like my brand color, but you couldn't see it. So I went with this. Anyway, enough rambling. Thank you once again for watching. And until next time, take it easy.